we present uh, tonight, for your listening pleasure, his second trip to the podium <laughs> to espouse his special blend of wackiness and science fiction. With Big Bang Cosmology, I know some of you are here because you think he made a porn. No, no, no. <laughs> it's really going to be about the Big Bang. I mean, so. I did, but that's for... Without well, that's further ado, welcome back Lawrence Yufa, Brother Lawrence. for me to talk about because I've never done this kind of talk before. I've always done uh, more of uh, philosophical talks. I've always done uh, stuff on theory of religion, stuff like that. This is uh, my first actual discussion on the Big Bang. Uh, there's a lot of stuff about the Big Bang. Many of these things you may know, some of which you may not. Uh, some things I omitted because I didn't think they were that important, and then I added in some other things. Uh, but this, the point of this talk is just to demonstrate how we know the Big Bang happened and the importance of all these discoveries. All right, so it was a dark and stormy night. And Albert Einstein had just finished developing his general theory of relativity in 1916. But there was a problem. His theory described a universe we didn't live in. His theory described a universe that was moving. Uh, and at the time, in 1916, it was common knowledge to think that the universe was static. So his, his math didn't really go with uh, observation at the time, which used to bother physicists. Uh, and so the, the part about this theory is that it was the first theory of the geometry of the universe. It was the first theory that showed the universe can actually bend in the presence of matter. Uh, so he added a term to his theories. Uh, we call that the cosmological term. All right, so this is just a rough breakdown. We're not going to have to do any crazy math or anything. Uh, so on one side, we have a curvature, and that is uh, equal to energy and momentum, to some ratio of it. Uh, so this was his original equation. But then, that described the universe we didn't live in. So he added this, this term right here. Uh, and that actually, we'll get back to that term later, but he had to actually move it from one side to the other, not because moving that term is hard. Most of us can do that. Uh, but it means something totally different on one side. What's the A as delta G V or something? What is it? What? Oh, that's lambda. Oh, it's a lambda. Yeah. Uh, what, is that? what is that? How do you say that? Lambda. No. Lambda <laughs> <laughs> G V. Well, it's actually uh, lambda G mu V, but I didn't really want to right. copy and paste the mu in there, so we're going to go with you. All right. Um, but anyways, on one side, it describes a property of the universe, and on the other side, it describes some function within the universe acting towards its curvature. And that's important, and we'll get back to that later. All right, so now we go to probably my favorite person uh, of all time, Edwin Hubble. Raise your hand if you know who Edwin Hubble is. Okay, good turn out there. All right, uh, he always gives me hope in humanity because he started out life as a lawyer and then became an astronomer. <laughs> so there's hope yet. Uh, so he went out in, a, in somewhere in the 1920s, I forget when exactly, uh, and he looked out into the sky at the uh, the largest telescope at the time, uh, and he was just looking up at the sky uh, for years, a noble tradition, uh, and this is what he saw. 
or I'll explain to you what you saw. Uh, but in order to get a good idea of what's going on, we have to go outside the universe. We can't do that. I mean, Republicans can, but we can't. We live here in the universe, in reality. Uh, so we have two universes here. Uh, and these are just galaxies, these dots are galaxies. Uh, universe at time one, and a universe at time two. And as you can see, it's expanding, right? All right. And now here is what I'll discover. If you take any one of these galaxies and superimpose the image of one onto another, you see the same thing. Galaxies that are twice as far away are twice the distance. Galaxies that are three times as far away are three times the distance. And it doesn't matter where you, what universe you pick, it's all gonna look the same. So what that really shows us is that the universe is expanding, the entire universe. I mean, you could take this to mean that you're the center of the universe, you know, depending on your mood. Well, uh, it really shows that the universe is expanding and that's the important part. All right, so how do we discover this? Uh, we have to talk about something called redshift. Uh, to know if something is moving away from us uh, at these great distances, uh, we have to look at its light. Uh, in the first example here, we have a galaxy, no expanding universe, and the light comes in how it normally would. Whatever light you would see is the light you would get. And then you have a galaxy moving away. Uh, as the universe expands, the light expands with it. Uh, you can think of it like this. If you take a rubber band and draw a wavelength on it, and then you have someone stretch it out, the entire uh, wavelength would expand. The entire wave would expand with it. So as the universe expands, we get something called redshift, and this is what you'd see. If something is moving, and this, this is, we'll call this star A, whatever, I don't care. Uh, if it's moving further away from us, everything is shifted towards the red part of the spectrum. So we see it slightly to the right, or slightly towards the red. Uh, and if something's moving closer to us, the light condenses, and it's called blue shift, and that means it's moving towards us. All right, so it's easy to measure speed, but it's difficult to measure distance. Uh, the universe is so huge, how do we measure something? We don't have you know, rulers or tape measures that go that long, so how do we measure this? We have to find these things called standard candles, and standard candles are very important. Uh, and I'll go over that in a second. Uh, but what I do want to just tell you guys, because it's an interesting fun fact, is that Hubble measured uh, the expansion of the universe off by a factor of 10, which means that he measured the expanding universe to be about one and a half billion years. He measured, it, he measured the universe to be one and a half billion years old. Uh, and at the time, it was already known that Earth was four and a half billion years. So it was quite embarrassing that uh, the universe was younger than the Earth, and it led a lot of people to believe science, scientists didn't know what they were talking about. All right, so here, is, here are our standard candles. So in every single one of these galaxies, these little bright spots, those are supernova. Uh, now, this kind of supernova, it's called a type 1a supernova, has an intrinsic brightness that we understand. And as, it's, as it moves further away, we get less and less light from it. But we know it's intrinsic brightness, so we can work backwards and get its distance. If I had a 100 watt light bulb and had it in the back of the room, I know it's intrinsic uh, brightness. And if I had a light meter over here, I could tell you exactly how far away it was, because I'll tell you how much light we're getting. And uh, I know that it's a one over the square of distance. So we could work backwards and figure out exactly how far away the light was. All right, and this is probably the greatest accident in all of physics. Uh, so the standard model we had at the Big Bang at the time predicted that there should be this leftover radiation from the beginning of the universe. Hey. And it was called the cosmic microwave background. But uh, the thing is, it was discovered completely by accident. Uh, these two gentlemen over here, you probably don't see them, but they're there. I assure you they exist. Uh, I forget their names. But they, this was their radio telescope. And honestly, I'll tell you, I forget what they were doing. But uh, no matter where they pointed this giant telescope, there was some noise. 
There was some noise that they couldn't get rid of. They heard the same thing every single place they pointed it. So they were like, what's going on? So they reattached some cables. They thought maybe it was bird poops, and they cleaned out the, the, uh, the telescope, the radio telescope. And still, they got the same thing. What they had accidentally discovered was this. Not exactly this, but some version of this. This is the cosmic microwave background. It is the leftover radiation from the Big Bang. This is a picture of the universe at what it looked like when it was 380,000 years old. Incredibly young for a universe. If, uh, it's, it's a baby picture. Now you think, oh, 380,000 years, that's, that's really old. It's like Bill O'Reilly old. Uh, but, but no, actually, if, uh, if the universe was an 80-year-old man, uh, 380,000 years would be about 19 hours old. So it's really a baby picture of the universe. All right. So we can learn a lot of stuff from just the cosmic microwave background. One of the most important things we can learn is the curvature of the universe. And this is pretty important. And this is actually what I need this board for. All right. So there's, uh, there are three possible states the universe can exist in. Open, closed, or flat. Now, what the hell do I mean? Obviously, the universe is you know somewhat round. It's everywhere. How, how, what do I mean by open, closed, and flat? What do I mean by the geometry of the universe? Uh, it all matters about how light travels within that universe. So I'm not very good at drawing a 2D three-dimensional object, so we're just going to call this a sphere. Uh, and this is what an open universe looks like, more like a saddle. And here's a flat universe. Uh, this is more Euclidean. This is something I don't understand. And this is also something I don't understand. All right. But the important part is that we can figure out the curvature of the universe by drawing triangles. And this is actually pretty important. On a closed surface, you know, if I had you know, a globe or something, here I'll call that a 90 degree angle. I'm going to travel all the way down and have another 90 degree angle. Go, you know, a quarter of the way west, or east, whatever, it doesn't matter, and go all the way back up. Now what we discover is on a curved surface, you can have a triangle with three right angles. Now, Euclidean geometry doesn't tell us that. I mean, what are you supposed to get in Euclidean geometry? 180, right? This gives you what, 270? Or more, depending on the, how big of a triangle you draw. Uh, then we can go to an open universe. What would a triangle look like in that? Uh, I'm not going to draw it up here. I'm just going to draw it down here. But it would look more curved. The lines at the end here would, uh, would converge. And the lines up here would actually diverge. We'll, we'll get to that later. Um, in the flat universe, perfectly normal. It's just a regular triangle things we're used to. All right, so how do we figure out what shape our universe is in? All right, well, we need to use this thing called the density parameter. Uh, and what that is, and I'm going to use some physics jargon here, all right, um, it's the s amount of stuff in the universe divided by the amount of stuff needed to make a flat universe, or to actually make a universe that would stop expanding. So it, look, it looks kind of like this. And whenever we have an important number in physics, we give it a Greek letter to sound smart. Uh, so here we have omega. We call that number omega. Uh, so we have omega equals the amount of stuff. So that's omega p over omega c. And that's the critical density. Uh, so how do we figure that out? So we look at some region of space. Let's say here we're looking at a region that's 380,000 light years across, for example. Uh, and here is you. Which, who, who wants to be this dot? Anyone? Ah, Joe. OK, Joe's going to be the dot. All right, we're going to make that a little smaller then. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we look out into the universe. In a flat universe, the light should travel straight. So we would see x amount of galaxies. Uh, in an open universe, the light would diverge at the end, and we'd see less galaxies. And in a closed 
universe. The light will converge at the end, and we'd see more. Are you guys following me so far? That's how this works? Okay. Uh, so, turns out that, oh, that popped up. Okay. Uh, turns out that the universe we live in, from our other models, turns out the universe is flat. And here is more we can do with that. So here we have three simulated universes. And here we have the actual cosmic microwave background. So we compare them. In a closed universe, it should look like this. Flat universe and open, that's how they should look. And it most closely resembles what? A flat universe. So we know we live in a flat universe. All right, so that was a pretty important stepping stone in cosmology. Now we can talk about probably the last important one, uh, gravitational waves. Uh, this one is actually still being debated because it was maybe two years ago that they discovered this. So it's still debated, but if we found what we think we found, it's huge. We have a picture of the, of the universe and what it looked like at about 10 to the negative 35 seconds, if it turns out we have what we have. All right, so think about it like this. Uh, when you wiggle a charge, you get electromagnetic radiation. You have an electron, you know, you, you wiggle it, and it gives out the light. It gives out light, and that's electromagnetic radiation. The same way, when you, make, when you wiggle a mass, you get a gravitational wave. Gravitational waves propagate, and you get the same type of wave, in a way. That's just an easy way to think about it. All right, so uh, what are these lines here, and what, what the hell do they mean? Uh, they actually show the polarization of atoms or molecules in the early universe. Uh, so if, or at that time it would be subatomic uh, particles, but either way, uh, that shows pol they, sh they show polarization. Uh, if mass is moving one direction, it looks like the red one. If mass is moving another direction, it looks like the other one. So we can tell, uh, we can look at the actual gravitational waves coming out, propagating from the Big Bang, in theory. So when we look at it, what do we find? We see exactly what we thought we would find. This is an actual diagram. You can see that whatever I had is blue. It goes the right way, the way that it should go. And anything in red, it goes the other way. It's exactly what we would expect to see. The polarization lines up just how we thought it would. And this is a very small part of the sky, by the way. So we'll keep that in mind. All right, so what do we know? We know the universe is expanding. We know that it's flat. And we know that the Big Bang happened. So now we can talk about the future of the universe. Uh, it's pretty grim. It's pretty dark. So I will enjoy it. I'm not sure about the rest of you, though. Uh, as things expand away, they will eventually end up expanding away faster than the speed of light. Now, that's because space is expanding. Space itself can expand as fast as it wants. It's just stuff in space can't expand faster than the speed of light. So eventually, the stuff that we see at the cosmic microwave background, the light rays will be stretched out so much that they will be the size of the observable universe. And we will not be able to see them. So that's part one. Uh, part two... So we won't be able to see any stars. We won't be able to see anything that far away at that point. Okay. But eventually, we won't be able, and this is far in the future, so just assume uh, all the galaxies in our local cluster have already clumped up together. Let's just assume that. Uh, and that's in what, 150 billion years, we'll call it? Okay, so in 150 billion years, you won't see any other galaxy. Everything outside of our cluster will be gone. We will not be able to see it. Uh, and then in about two trillion years, the entire universe will be invisible. We will not be able to see anything outside of what is here. Uh, and that leads to the inevitable death of the universe. Uh, you can imagine how much it sucks if one part of the universe can't get informa information from the other part. You could imagine us not getting heat from the sun. That would suck, right? Uh, eventually, all the stars will die out. They will not be able to form new ones. 
and all the particles that exist will decay, and that's it. That's the future of our universe. The inevitable heat death. So it's grim and depressing, but we know it's going to happen. So that's all for now, and enjoy your time while it lasts. <laughs> when do the four horsemen of the apocalypse come? Um, right after the heat death. <laughs>